Secure web gateways have been widely deployed as we've adjusted to our work from home model, and they're a critical component of the SASE framework. Let's take a deeper look at what secure web gateways can do for you and how the industry is evolving. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and not necessarily a reflection of my employer's views or opinions. As a quick overview, we're going to first discuss what SASE is. If you're not familiar with the topic, we're just going to spend a minute or two exploring the concept of SASE, and then we're going to talk specifically about why you want a secure web gateway. And once we talk about why you want a secure web gateway, a lot of people react to the components of an SWG as something that they already have deployed through some of their other security elements. Well, we're going to talk about why you may want to use a secure web gateway instead of relying on some of those ad hoc elements in, in some of your other solutions. Then we're going to look at some use cases for secure web gateway so you can help determine whether or not it's appropriate for your business. And then we'll talk about how to make a secure web gateway decision. A quick overview on SASE. So SASE, S-A-S-E, stands for Secure Access Service Edge. Now it's a framework that we've evolved, actually Gartner has defined and has evolved in the industry that allows for a clouded environment rather than a prem or data center centric environment. And it also accommodates a distributed workforce, whether people are working from home or you have a series of small offices or remote offices where a, a full security stack may not be warranted. It focuses on delivering adaptive access and security to the users rather than bringing users back to a central security stack. This allows direct access to cloud workloads rather than having to hairpin through a data center to, uh, to have the security applied. Now, because we are providing users direct access to their cloud environments, they can use any device. As long as they're still um, working within the SASE framework, they can use any device that is preferable to them. And SASE will apply the appropriate security elements adaptively. So, for example, if I'm using my personal uh, tablet, SASE will recognize that this is not a corporately managed device and apply different security policies than I might have if I were using my company laptop. Again, SASE is a framework, not yet a solution. The solutions are maturing very, very rapidly, but you really can't buy a SASE solution right now. You can buy individual point solutions that have a SASE strategy, and those strategies are expanding rapidly to cover many of the SASE categories. So let's take a look at what some of those categories are. So the first category of SASE is network as a service. This is delivering network and services to your core um, network points. So this includes carrier services, software defined wide area networking, CDN or content distribution networks, bandwidth aggregation and optimization and your edge equipment stack. Now the security as a service component of SASE includes things like firewall as a service, secure web gateway, cloud access security broker, zero trust, web API protection, DNS, remote browser isolation, and sandboxing. Today we're going to focus on the secure web gateway component of your SASE strategy. Now, the last thing I want to say, and I'm not going to go through this entire slide deck, is do you need SASE? And my general answer is if your security stack looks pretty much like it did five years ago, but your compute environment has changed to more of a cloud-centric environment, you probably are going to have to deploy SASE at some point in time because maintaining your legacy security strategy is going to get very expensive and it impacts your end user experience. So, um, so adopting a SASE strategy will probably be in your future. So let's take a look at Secure Web Gateway. What is it? Well, historically, Secure Web Gateways have been proxies, which would protect the user identity and apply security protocols to people that are accessing the public internet. It protects users from accessing malicious content on the, on the internet, and it applies web use policies, like which websites they can visit, which applications they can access, and so forth. It will also inspect TLS stream. So it does deep packet inspection. It'll decrypt and re-encrypt traffic to ensure there's no malicious payload in those encrypted streams. It monitors application risk and will risk score various applications so you can manage what your end users can access. And when clouded, 
it protects users and their devices really from anywhere, anywhere that they want to access the corporate resources. They can be protected in a secure web gateway type of construct. Now, secure web gateways have been evolving very rapidly within this new SASE framework. They've included things like zero trust elements, which is more of an ad adaptive security, verify first and then provide access rather than provide access and then verify. It includes things like uh, personal network-based firewalls, and it also has data loss prevention elements. Now, frequently when I talk about secure web gateways with clients, the immediate reaction is, I'm already doing a lot of that stuff with my current security stack. So some people may have purchased a secure web gateway, a dedicated platform for their prem-based services. Um, that's rare, but it does, uh, it does exist. More commonly, clients are doing some of these functions within their firewall or within their endpoint protection platform. And while those are well and good, they're generally not fully featured and they're generally more expensive than necessary. So let's start with the dedicated SWG platform. It's probably relatively expensive, especially if you're including the client apps that are required now for, uh, for today's distributed workforce. From a firewall perspective, you can do a lot of the content filtering in a full UTM type of platform, but it's probably stressing out your firewall, reducing uh, processing power available to other services, and generally those capabilities are rather limited in terms of what's available on, on the firewall. And the same thing goes for managing some of these capabilities on the endpoint through your endpoint protection platform. It, the capabilities are generally limited and it makes the endpoint protection platform application a really heavy, a really uh, resource intensive application to run on that device. So this is where a SASE model for secure web gateway can really benefit the organization. It's generally less ex expensive than a dedicated platform. And because it's cloud-based, all the heavy duty processing uh, components are located in the cloud off of your network and improves the end user experience considerably. Let's explore some of the use cases for secure web gateway so you can determine whether or not it's appropriate for your business. The first use case is generic web filtering and DNS management, making sure people are not going to dangerous sites. Now this is a lot more effective in a clouded SWG because the um, threat intelligence databases can live in the cloud much more economically, much more efficiently than they can live within your data center. You can gain visibility and monitoring of individual web behavior to ensure that people are using corporate resources for corporate purposes protect against malware and leverage advanced threat detection, again, with that TLS deep packet inspection capability. It allows your users to access web applications directly and efficiently without having to hairpin users through a central data stack. You can apply web policies and governance and protect or shield the organization from unauthorized use of equipment, again, and unauthorized applications such as shadow IT. And you can also prevent data loss through a secure web gateway. So what do you want to con consider when you're buying a secure web gateway? As always, you have to understand your strategy. You have to know what the components you have today and what you'll need in the future because the secure web gateway component of SASE is intermingling with all the other components. So if you're just buying a secure web gateway today for a particular component that we've talked about, make sure that you also understand the additional components that come with it and when you might be able to utilize those by possibly turning down some of the other services that, that are currently providing that functionality. Understand your Secure Web Gateway's vendor's SASE strategy. I can't uh, overemphasize this enough. In the future, you're not going to have a half a dozen or 10 different security products in your organization. The SASE strategy is one of consolidation of security products, bringing everything into a single management platform that will allow you to a lot more efficiency and a lot more visibility across all of your security components and your uh, overall security posture. So if the secure web gateway provider that you're looking at doesn't have a strong SASE strategy, you might want to consider someone else that might be a better long-term fit. Understand what services might be redundant over time. 
we mentioned that you can get a lot of the, of the secure web gateway services from a, from existing components that you may have already installed. Well, those components may not be necessary in the future with your secure web gateway services. So what can you leverage in terms of canceling licensing um, or uh, changing your, your strategy with some of the other elements to increase your security posture and reduce your overall cost? And then lastly, how will these um, different products, especially products from different manufacturers, integrate with one another? How will you manage it? What sort of visibility will you build to allow you to manage your entire security framework or your entire security posture as a single solution rather than a bunch of individual solutions? I've talked a lot about managed service providers, but this is where managed service providers really become an effective part of your strategy, where they are providing a little bit of that uh, unification within your security strategy across various platforms. Now here are some key players in our portfolio that offer Secure Web Gateway. Some are native Secure Web Gateway providers like, the, like Zscaler, for example. Some are just moving into the space like some of the traditional uh, firewall providers that you see on this list. Some are building native SASE platforms that include SWG as, a, uh, as an organic part of their platform rather than something that's been acquired and bolted on. So with that, I'd invite you to take a couple next steps. Number one, if you're considering any security solution, including a secure web gateway, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to have a conversation. There's never a cost uh, to, um, to talk about what you're thinking of. And, and uh, certainly if you're looking for assistance in, in acquiring some of these platforms, there's also no cost for my organization to, uh, to do that. And then if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like and thank you very much in advance for doing that. And if you wanna find your way back here in the future, the best way of doing that is to hit that subscribe button. That will put my channel in your feed and you can find your way back here at your convenience. And with that, I appreciate your time and I hope you have a great day.